Ah, oh, guys. History repeats itself. I made an oopsie. In this particular case, I think it's me and the fish store made an oopsie. A while back, I added a Molly Miller Blenny in this tank to address the Aptasia's issues. While the Aptasia's has largely been controlled, what I learned yesterday was that my Blenny may not actually be a Molly Miller Blenny. The Molly Miller Blenny I've seen in photos seems to be kind of silverish. Maybe have a little bit of red, a little bit of blue, and these are all like really pastel-y color. However, this guy right here actually has some orange dots that started developing. Now, when I first picked up this fish, it did not have these markings. Flashback. So they have one of the fish I'm looking for the uh, Mali Milogoni because supposedly they uh, eat Aptasia, at least small Aptasias. That guy's tiny though. There's one in the back, a little bit bigger, but doesn't look like what I see in pictures. So, okay, Mali Milogoni. I wasn't sure if that one is it, but that looks like it. So, we'll go ahead and pick one up. 20 bucks, not bad at all. Aptasia control, hopefully. I have a bad feeling about this. Don't say that shit. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Whoa, 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 whoa. Dude is freaking out. This is $20. No way. This is $20. Legit. I would rather get a pie fish. End of flashback. But I guess as it matured in this tank, it started to develop these orange spots. And I mean, while it looks great, it made me suspicious whether it's actually a Molly Miller Blenny or not. And as you have guessed, I posted a photo on my Instagram account with the caption that I'm not 100% sure if this is actually a Molly Miller Blenny and people chimed in. They're saying that, oh, we have kept Molly Miller Blennies and ours do not look like this guy. And as always, thanks to some of you guys, I was able to ID this Blenny as a Atlantic Oyster Blenny. And while this Atlantic Oyster Blenny does look really cool, especially with the orange marking coming in, he does pose as a threat to meaty LPS, for example, like this Aiken or Michael Musa Lord right here that is perching under right now. I love fish, but unless it is a really, really special fish, if the fish picks at corals, <sighs> All right, so my good old fish trap is back in the tank. This is the same trap I caught my bicolor blenny, and I think, what else I caught with? I think there's one other fish I caught with. It's gonna take a while for the fish to get used to this right here, and I'll try to feed the fish here. And the reason I set the trap like near this level, uh, near the Aiken, is obviously because I've seen the blenny kind of hang out on this rock. I feel like it's a natural next step. Throughout the next couple days, I'm gonna start feeding fish here. It'll be a little bit tricky. I'll probably use turkey baster. Uh, to send the food in here. So hopefully the fish will get, uh, will get used to it. I have a fishing line tied to my speaker. So if I see the fish I want go in there, I will just kind of release the trap. Trap door is gonna come down. The trap door does not come down too fast, but usually the fish is a little bit too disoriented to uh, think about bolting back out this way. But we'll see because this Blenny is smart. This guy is smart and really alert. So we'll see if he uh, falls with this trap right here. Nothing crazy, just feeding some uh, flick food. Want to see some general reaction from the Blenny. It looks like the Blenny doesn't mind the trap so much because look, Blenny's right there already. Trap just went in. Still really, really quick. Um, I do like the fact that some of the food is being blown into the trap. So that's kind of cool. And it is kind of encouraging that the blending is still coming out even though the acrylic trap is right there in the space. We see the blending is on top of the toll stool. It seems like he'll grab the food and he'll just swim right back to his rock. The next morning. Today's day one of me trying to catch a blending with the trap officially. I chummed the water with some reef nutrition uh, the food just to get everybody woken up. And then I mix up some prime reef flake. My fish seems to like the prime reef flakes because it uh, seems to be tasty. And also um, for me personally, in this case, they're large, they float. Um, fish can see it easily versus like little pellets. I try to siphon them up in this uh, turkey baster and then just kind of send them into the trap. Oh man, the Blenny is, Blenny is already attacking it. This looks, dude, Blenny is already at the door. Blenny is at the door. Blenny's in. Blenny's in. I needed to go in a little bit further. This is it. This could be ridiculously easy. Just thinking about, he's in. Oh, he came back out. Came back out. Man, this is great. This is fantastic. Go for it, man. I was afraid these won't, I was afraid this trap won't work because of uh, how old school it is. It's like a trap door. Doors doesn't come down quickly. 
Um, I was gonna get the tank mates, but if this works, this is fantastic. This is it. Yeah? In three. I wanted to go in a little bit further. That's it. That's it. That's it! Just like that! Just like that! Just like that! I'm gonna be quiet. Emily's in a meeting right now. Just like that. Just like that. Oh, I thought I'd be here for a long time. Okay, alright, alright. Now we're not gonna repeat the same mistake. So, with the uh, bi color blenny, I was so excited. I was pumping my fist and I accidentally lifted the trap door. This was it. Just like that. That's right. Ah. Ah. I like you, little buddy, but uh. I don't want to risk you picking at my corals, man. Um, what do I do with him now? I didn't expect to catch him this quickly. I honestly did not expect to catch him this quickly. So, I have no plan. <sighs> so that was half the battle. Now I gotta get this guy out without him getting loose. Oh yeah, here we go. Chunky little guy. And now we can officially celebrate. Atlantic Oyster Blenny. He got some really nice orange spot coming in. Beautiful, beautiful fish, lots of personality. The reason I'm pulling this guy out is because uh, people who've kept this fish said that he picks at Aiken Lords, they actually eat them. So uh, I'm gonna move this guy to the mangrove tank. Mangrove tank does not have any Aikens in there. The only fleshy coral I got is Space Invader Pectinia. And if he does pick at the uh, Space Invader Pectinia, we can easily rehome the Pectinia into this tank because if you look at the frag, frag's doing fantastic. We have acclimated the fish, and this guy is ready to go in. Along with your flake food. Uh oh. There he goes. Well, it was a funny little joke because as Emily's finishing up the meeting, came downstairs, and I was like, <laughs> I was like, what happened to the fish? Where is it? So I was like, I flushed it down the toilet, and she freaked out. Now, this came from a person that does not like fish. Well, she doesn't hate fish, but like, she's I like, I hate you more. Uh, yeah. She, she started chewing, she's like, are you serious? I was like, yeah. So it's kind of cool. I mean, she apparently cool. has a heart. It's not cool, you lied to me, heart. you lied to me. The next day. Just drop some food into the mangrove tank. You see the uh, nice and chunky manga cardinals going after the food. But today, who we want to focus on, is, let me see if we can sneak up on him. Right there in the center frame. I almost said Molly Miller Blenny, but no, it's actually the Atlantic. Oyster Blenny right here. It has only been one day since the move and he already made himself at home. He found a nice little cave to kind of back up into and he'd been hanging out there ever since. It seems to be doing well. <laughs> Kai's like, nope, I don't want to see you, I hate you. Uh, in terms of like living arrangement, obviously it's uh, size-wise is a big, big downgrade from a 135 gallon tank to a 17 gallon tank. But I feel like this tank is much calmer, especially with the Bank of Cardinals right here. And a lot of pots. If this guy want to pick a pot, he can pick it up all day. But uh, he did find a nice little home in here. By the way, do you guys remember the Space Invader Pectinia that fragged two videos ago? You still see a little bit of whites in terms of um, tissue discoloration right there, but all the wound has been sealed. Let me see, let me show you guys from here. Look at that. The large gash has completely closed up and now just a little discoloration on the tissue and that's pretty much it. Yeah, pulling through okay. Well, I'm just waiting for this guy to be a little bit bolder, just like the Xenia Warrior Princess crab right here. This this guy just on the plow, just plowing through all the corals and uh, looks like on his leg it's still got a little bit of Xenia left, not as much as before, which is a shame. But yeah, all right, I'm gonna give the Blenny a chance to really settle in. This is only day two of him being in this tank, so we'll check in with him and see how he's doing. One nap later. Now is the third day of the Blenny in the tank. I just fed the tank. As you can see, the bang guys are happily taking up the flakes. He is thinking about it. That'll do it, that'll do it, that'll do it. There he is. All right, well, I guess all is well now that he's uh, feeding. All right, and here's the chunky bang guy. Really can't wait for them to start breeding. Um, I hope adding the blenny in this tank is not gonna disturb these guys too much because ultimately I feel like this, this tank is their home. Like they are the OGs in here. And um, yeah, just waiting for them to get down with it and then I'll get a long spine urchins and a long tentacle anemone. That'd be super awesome. But today, this video is dedicated to this apparently Atlantic Oyster Blenny. What a guy. 
and um, I noticed the orange spotting started coming back so I think he's uh, adjusting to this tank really well. It's interesting in this tank as well because as one type of macroalgae, namely the red spine one that I took out, as, as that went away, the other one just kind of stepped up to take a spot. For example, the palm tree macroalgae has never done well for me. I always only get one stock. But these days, it is super, super happy in this tank. So the nutrient got to go somewhere, right? And look at this. This little frack of uh, Space Invader Pectinia is already sending out Sweet Portentacle, trying to attack the uh, Zoas right there. <laughs> so <laughs> living up to the name of Space Invader Pectinia. Wow, you know what's cool? I just saw that actually. You see that Kryptonite Candy Cane right there? That polyp right there is splitting into three. One into three, and that one is one into two. That's kind of cool. So I guess that guy is doing well here. Uh, I got two other clusters in the uh, 135 downstairs, but I figure I'll leave one here. I don't want to keep all the corals uh, in one basket per se, especially if they do well in both tanks anyways. All right, well, that'll do it with this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, thankfully, I did not make the same mistake as I did when I was trying to catch the bicolor blendy back in the days. If you have not seen that video, that is one of uh, my favorite videos, according to a lot of people. Basically, I cut blendy, Got super excited, started dancing around celebrating and accidentally let the blenny out. I guess people online like to see each other fail. You sick bastards. Just kidding. Me too. Alright man, I hope you guys have a fantastic weekend. I'll see you guys next Sunday at 12.30pm shop. Bye. Look at the tank without that big piece of rock up front. Pretty nice and clear, huh? But at the same time, I feel like that piece of rock just adds so much color pop.